All right, uh, I'll call the meeting to order. This is the um, May 26 meeting of the Conway Select Board. It's about 6.01. Um, we're being, uh, we're recording this meeting on Zoom. Okay, first item on the agenda is the minutes for the May 18th meeting. Uh, we do not have those minutes, so we're going to table that for tonight. All right. Uh, next item is warrants. Uh, we have a vendor warrant for $84,776, a payroll warrant of $111,243, and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,948. I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants to have a second. Second. Second by Bob. All in favor, Philip? Yes. Half an hour. Half an hour was 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 tough to read them all. Forty-five minutes to an hour would have been better. Um, but I did make it through them. And yes. Okay. Good. Bob, you're Aye. yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Next item: uh, meetings attended by select board member. <clears throat> Philip, what do we got? Yeah, we had the. Um, the Conway School Committee budget uh, uh, here at revised budget hearing and vote um, on Wednesday. And we also had a Conway Grammar School executive session to discuss Union 38 negotiations, which uh, are starting again. So, and I'll be happy to talk about that more in executive session should you want, wish to schedule one. Okay. All right. Uh, Robert? Well, we had our aggregation meeting on Wednesday, and it went, I would say, as well or better than we could have hoped. And basically, like we talked about last week, um, the, the bids came in lower than Eversource, and actually, even the 5% additional green bid was lower than Eversource's summer rate. And uh, so I, I ended up... Uh, I assigned for, so what, I mean, what we as a board get to do for Conway is choose what the products are that we're going to make available to the residents of Conway. And so they're going to have um, a product that, that's, that's no extra green. So that would be the lowest price product and a product that's 100% extra class one uh, renewable energy. And that's the higher price product. And the the default product that people will move into for the first five months will be 5% extra green, and that'll be lower than Eversource's price. And then when Eversource goes to their winter rates, which we don't know what they're going to be, but they're usually uh, a, a cent and a half or more higher than the summer rates, um, and that'll provide a good amount for us to have additional green, which is what everyone in Conway wanted in our survey. They wanted us to buy as much green as we could, but be less than Eversource. Now, we don't know what Eversource is going to be, but so, so after the first five months, we're going to move into 25% extra green, and I anticipate that also will be lower than the Eversource price. So those are the three products we're going to have. We're going to have no extra green, 100%. And then a mid-range product that's going to be as much green as we think we can purchase, but be lower than Eversource. Great. So that worked out great. All 13 towns all joined the aggregation, signed their documents for the electric bids, and uh, the broker is now making all of the educational documents for us to have a, a Zoom meeting with folks in Conway and uh, to put things on the town website. I did write an article about all this for the Conway Currents that should be out soon. Great, great. Okay. Thank you, Bob. A, a question that I was asked this was, was, hey, if everybody in town does this, how much would the whole town save? Uh, well, it all depends upon how much you're currently, uh, how, how much you're currently spending. Right, I don't, don't, they have that, don't they have that aggregate total somewhere? I, I certainly don't know it, Phil. Philip, um, if, if you use 7,500 kilowatt hours a year and figure the difference between the Eversource rate and the rate we got, you can figure out for, this, what, 760 households? 
right? Yeah, most people use around 600, on average, 600 kilowatt hours a month. And so we're going to be at a little under nine cents a kilowatt hour for the electricity. And then Eversource adds on their distribution charges on top of that. But it's gonna, we're going we're gonna to save about, about a, a cent and a half per kilowatt hour. And uh, so that's about six, six or seven dollars a month, maybe ten dollars a month. Okay. Yeah, that's great. All right. Um, let's see. I had uh, the FERCOG Finance Committee meeting. We discussed uh, group buying for um, personal protective equipment for all the towns. Uh, and then that went before the council on Thursday, and that was passed. So the FERCOG will be um, buying in bulk um, some personal protective equipment for the towns to to get. Great. Um, I also had a a webinar today with the lieutenant governor and a couple of the secretaries. It's an MMA sponsored um, webinar where they give us updates. Um, there wasn't too much useful information in there actually today. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've done last week. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? I guess not. We have no public here. Um, old business considering operating budget cuts. Now we want to do this in joint with the, um, uh, with the finance committee, don't we, Tom? Uh, yeah, what I would suggest is going to new business first and then coming back and uh, the select board can discuss, um, you know, uh, amongst itself, any, any items, uh, any of the updates that I provided, that sort of thing before the finance committee comes on, if you like. All right, good. All right, we'll go on to new business. Um, First item in new business is to allow the FERCOG to bid on behalf of the highway department for highway services. Uh, uh, this, is an, this is an annual uh, permission the town has to give. Uh, the FERCOG goes out to bid in bulk for all of the, the uh, county highway departments, uh, gets good prices. Uh, that's the point of buying in bulk. So um, I recommend sticking with the program. Just like our aggregation, <laughs> except it's for, for a high in bulk. materials. Right. This is something we do every year with FERCOG. Um, you know, it's just, just standard stuff. They do the bulk buying. Uh, they handle that for towns in both um, Franklin County and a number of towns in Hampshire County. So, um, well, actually now I think they're doing all of Hampshire County because they took over the... Uh, the purchasing for um, the HCOG. So it's it's quite a few towns. I, I guess we got 26, <coughs> Hampshire has 15. So, you know, you've got 41 towns that they're bidding for. So that that's good. Any questions? No, it's a good thing. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion that we, um, we approve um, the uh, idea of FERCOG to go to bid for us for highway department materials. Do I have a second? Second. Second, okay. All in favor, Philip? Yes. Bob? Aye. Yeah, and me, all right. Additional um, this, this will require a uh, select board signature. So John and Phil, I'll have this out on the table. Right, yep, okay. Yeah, so, the, so the doc, all right. Item is additional work on the town hall repair. Tom, you want to give us a little about that? Yeah. Uh, a number of people over the years have pointed out that there was a tree growing out of the chimney in the town hall. Someone the pointed that out to me this no weekend, Tom. So this is very. <laughs> uh, could, uh, could you? Could 
Somebody's glad to see yeah, you. So, um, so while, while we had the, um, you know, because the, um, the uh, community preservation article is for um, repairs to town hall in general, as well as the specific cupola and front door things, um, I think this fits within that. Um, and we certainly have enough money within the uh, amount that was authorized to spend on repairing town hall. Uh, we have more than enough for that. So the, um, the cost for this was, uh, came in at $6,480. Uh, Ron has looked at this and I've looked at this. One of the advantages here is that they already have the lift. Uh, so this cost excludes what anyone else would have to charge to rent a lift to come in and uh, do the work. Uh, it's a chimney that's no longer used. So uh, it's also the, the uh, contractor was uh, suggesting that we cap the chimney uh, after repairing it, and that makes good sense. It used to be the um, exhaust for the oil boiler, but now that we have propane, the propane gets vented out of the side. Mm -hmm. So we really should cap it. Right now, the bricks are loose because of the, at least in part, because of the tree growing in and loosening up the mortar and, you know, the roots grow and break things apart. So uh, this is for... Um, uh, fixing the loose bricks, repointing the chimney, sealing the chimney, which is important as well, um, removing the uh, tree, of course, and uh, capping the chimney. So that came to uh, 6480, again, which is uh, minus the cost of bringing in a new lift. They they will have to extend uh, the rental of the lift, but it's less than bringing in a lift. Uh, a new. So uh, Ron and I considered this a deal. It has to be done. Uh, and we're proposing uh, just uh, signing this contract, um, technically separate from the, the first contract, but uh, the same people are there. You know, it's below 10,000. So we both consider this a deal and recommend uh, select board approval and signing the contract. Tom, this is coming out of CPA funds, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so can I ask you that? If we cap the chimney, we won't be able to grow trees out of it anymore. You know? It's cute. So can I- It's can less I just, decorative. Can I, just, can I just ask about this? Because um, yesterday I happened to see Charlie Marsh, and I don't know if you guys know who Charlie Marsh is, the born and raised in Conway, sort of a legendary brick mason who does every chimney in town he did all year. of mine. What's that? He did all of mine. Right. And, and he's known for the quality of his work and the reasonableness of his prices. And, uh, and I said, you know, hey, we're, we're looking to get that chimney done. And he drove down and he said, um, he'll do it, guarantees no more than 6000 and probably less. But he would do it with staging and he's critical of a mason that would use a boom lift. Can't do a good. <laughs> so he, guar he guarantees that, he'll, that the job will be better done. Um, it's a local guy, so uh, and uh, he just wants to say that he'll do it for guarantee no more than six thousand, and he would do it by doing stages and an assistant that's also from Conway. So uh, do you, uh, I don't suppose you have that in writing. Uh, he he said write it up and he'll do it, but he's he's a guy that shakes hands and that's that. But he'll do he'll do something in writing. Uh, Phil, can I ask you to get me something in writing by noon tomorrow? Sure. Uh, so can I can uh, can the vote be um, that if we if we get Phil's uh, quote by noon tomorrow that we uh, we use the the local fellow and if not um, we uh, we go with the uh, quote that we have. Do we need one? Can we wait till next week on this? I'm, I'm no, they, I'm they, they, way, John, why not? They, oh, okay. they either need, we, they, they, they need to either renew the thing or not. And, uh, you know, Ron is, is willing to take it out of his budget too. 
And, um, you know, we've, this will um, throw a wrench into the plans, but um, if that is the select board's will, I will do that. I would love to have this done by you Charlie. Know, I, I'm with we, we can save 500 bucks anyway. What wrench? Why is it a wrench? <laughs> not even a wrench. Not even a wrench. A thumbtack, maybe. But not a wrench. All right, we need to um, we need to have something in writing from Charlie. Yeah. All right. So when can Charlie get that to us? I'm saying by noon tomorrow. Yeah. These people would have to would have to re-rent the list. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll call them as soon as we're done tonight. So. All right, so it's it's your feeling that uh, Bob and Phil, you want to go with Charlie? I, I yes, uh, yeah. You don't know Charlie, I guess, John. No, I know Charlie. Oh, okay. Charlie is eighty uh, second airborne. I know Charlie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, you know, as long as we can get this done quickly. Yeah. Because there have been a couple of people who were wondering when are we get, going to get the, chim the tree out of the chimney. All right, so when can Charlie do this? Um, he, he said he said he said in short order. I don't know. I'll find out exactly when that means. But now he has he has everything he needs to get up there and to do this right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, and actually, you could sell tourist tickets just to watch him hump like five hundred pound loads like up the stage and <laughs> get there. The sight to behold. All right. Um, yeah, Tom. If we can get something tomorrow on that. So. All right. I guess the motion will be to. Um, to approve the job, for Charlie. At, at how much? No more than six. No more than, no, no more, more than, than six thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and Charlie's going to get us something in writing tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So the motion is uh, we want to hire Charlie Marsh to do this job on the chimney for the town hall um, at no more than six thousand dollars. I have a second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. Oh. Robert? Yeah, aye. We're all in favor. Okay. Let's get the paperwork in tomorrow so we have it. I, uh, I've notified the other fellow that I will tell him by noon whether or not he needs to renew that lift. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Good. All right, let's see. We, uh, we're not at 6.30 yet. Um, Tom, can you give us uh, your update? Oh, sure. In um, committee news, the Community Preservation Committee has indeed added an item to their list of um, items for the town meeting article, which I mentioned before they might. It's uh, $50,000 from the unreserved fund balance for conservation of the McLeish Stone House. Uh, as I mentioned last week, I have added that to their article as it does not affect the budget. Uh, the Friends of the South River and the Conway Open Space Committee are, are organizing garlic mustard pulling at the South River Meadow. Michelle Touré is the contact. Uh, in departmental news, I recently learned that municipal legislative bodies, town meeting in our case, uh, are exempt from social distancing requirements. That said, I believe people would still feel substantially safer having town meeting outdoors. I paced out the Conway Grammar School playground, which has an accessible and relatively large hard surface, along with the majority of grass surface. It could hold at least 200 people in a rectangle spaced 
six feet apart and well over 200 if there were just an aisle at the center and not on the sides. Uh, there would be ample parking and setting up the chairs would certainly be easier. Um, uh, on the other hand, I got an email from Bruce Joannette, which said, years ago, a teacher borrowed some chairs for a backyard party and the chairs all came back with no feet or the, you know, the rubber caps on the end which leaves exposed raw metal tubes for feet. And needless to say, the gym floor would not do well with a great number of tubes to destroy the finish. Um, there are no external electric outlets, but you could run extension cords. I have plenty out any exterior door. I still think you'd be better off at the ball field. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe the Bovios could help with the parking. Um, I don't see that uh, chair item as a deal breaker. Um, first, we could always, you know, ensure we replaced any caps that were broken or lost. Uh, it sounds to me as though they went into the, uh, they either fell off or they went into the, uh, they got pushed into the ground and when the chair got pulled up, the uh, caps didn't come with them. Yeah. Uh, but I think we could do a better job than that. Um, so, uh, that's just a note on, uh, Bruce's response on having it at the school. So please keep that in mind when that venue decision gets made. I don't, I don't uh, think that's a big deal. I don't think it's I, a uh, I think the school um, is better for most been, people. I've been fleshing out the reopening plan I shared two weeks ago. We've reinstalled the half door to the finance offices at the town office and are waiting for a plexiglass shield, actually three of them. Uh, we've gotten a supply of disinfectant wipes. I'm creating a checklist for cleaning based on CDC guidance. Until those are in place, we're not open to the public, but I expect we will be um, at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, we will also maintain our current schedules, especially for the treasurer collector's office. The town clerk is working regular hours. We're planning to send all able-bodied visitors to her office by the back door. Uh, I expect to have a draft application for a second Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership grant for your review next week. Uh, Phil and I got the grant today from uh, Peggy Sloan. Uh, Peggy, uh, she's drafting it to fit the Williamstown project, and the deadline for submittal is June 18th. Uh, the FERCOG has informed us that they are following a positive anaplasmosis test result in a Conway resident. The resident was seen and treated with antibiotics. Tick disease continues. Mm. And finally, the team that's been coordinating information about the town's COVID-19 response is suspending its weekly calls unless the situation changes. There's been little news lately, and personal protective equipment and cleaning supply items are now being procured mainly through private firms. MEMA has stopped distributing such items, although the FERCOG is still offering them. So that is my report. Tom, Tom brought up a good point. I did forget in my uh, list of meetings that that we did have a conference call with with um, Peggy Sloan about the next phase MTWP project, and um, she did submit an initial version, sort of, um, which I thought pretty good to me. I don't, um, and, and uh, you know, we'll get to tinker with it a little bit, and we'll all see it next week. But that was on the list. And then as to location of town meeting, um, I agree with outside. I'm completely agnostic as between ball field and grammar school. Um, I, I do understand, I don't, you know, to me, I wonder what the health department thinks versus what the police chief thinks versus what the council of aging thinks um, about each one. My understanding is that the majority of those thought the grammar school was the better location for um, people with mobility issues. So, um, it, uh, 
but I do, I, I should. And it certainly has more parking. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that I, I did get several calls this week, um, one from Darius and one from the school nurse, just asking us to reconsider the frontier option because the, the amount of, they, they said the amount of effort and work that is going to set that up for the three towns um, that, that comprise frontier besides us is, is just really impressive and that they're going to have it all squared away and all safe and PA and comfortable setups and this and that. And they're actually doing the road so that people can, mobility issue people can, um, can drive up, like right up to it and um, whatever. So I'll just put that out there. Um, you know, but I, I, when do they need to know? I, I don't know because if ours is June 20th, they're, they're having one there on June 23rd. So I don't, I don't know that they would do much for us. It's, it's set up. It's all there. Um, cause I think Sunderland's or Waitley's is the 23rd. I think Sunderland's Sunderland. Yeah. Um, so they could be ready well, we'll for ours. Complete. What's that? We'll have to, we'll have to know before the warrants complete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, again, so I, and and I don't, um, I, I don't, I, I kind of think that for for some people that's a, that's actually a thir twenty five minute drive to get to Frontier for people that live up near Ashfield or whatever. Um, yeah, I I think it would keep people from going to the town meeting. And and. Um, yeah, when I did say that to the county public health authority, they, they, uh, they, they didn't think much of that excuse. They thought that it was a quick drive, no matter what, no matter where you are in Conway. But I, I think it, it held weight with me. I don't know. The short drive so, was um, on Matthew's run. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Fuck. So, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that for now. Uh, I have some, uh, some kind of awkward and unfortunate news. Um, I shot an email to the uh, contractor, uh, but he'd been in touch with Ron, who, uh, who had said that, you know, he would go ahead and pay for it himself if he had to, and gave Scott the go-ahead to, um, to do the work. Uh, so, unfortunately, it's almost all done now to on do the, the chimney. For the chimney. Because oh, oh. Ron was thinking of it as building maintenance anyway. So it can either be building maintenance, budget, or community preservation. But uh, I was just informed that the work is, except for capping the chimney, is complete. All right, well, no, okay, that's there we go. <laughs> then we'll have to re withdraw that motion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, no, I think the motion is fine. Just that Phil can tell Charlie that's what happened, and and you won't get anything tomorrow from I, Charlie. I never promised anything to the guy. I don't have right, to. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Charlie's okay. Yeah, yeah. Charlie is quite okay, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. All right, Tom. Anything else? Uh, I have a uh, two, no. I have a question about the update, yeah. Tom. So two things. Yeah. One, the, about that second grant you mentioned, the one that Phil just got from Peggy Sloan, could could we send a copy of that to the people who came to the meetings to talk about that grant earlier? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know all their names, but I could say Priscilla Lynch and maybe Hope Crolius and Jan. And there were a number of people who came that were very interested in in the grant. And, and I, I don't know. Maybe Lisa or somebody has got a, a list of who attended and if we could send them that grant. Because I thought it was excellent. And I, I think it's good enough to have, you know, have it looked at by some of the people that's, who are That's interested. a good idea. And actually, the list of names is on the minutes from that meeting. Yeah. And, and I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that tonight, too, while I'm... Okay, great. And, and the other one was a, just a little clarification about, about Michelle Torrey's garlic mustard. So... She's Michelle has organized um, invasive species events for years. Now she, this is not going to be an mm -hmm. event like usual. She's not asking people to all come together and do it. 
She's providing pictures of the of garlic mustard, and she's sort of requesting that when people are walking their dog or otherwise walking on the on the field, if they see garlic mustard, pull it out and you know don't don't and and, and she can talk to you about how to dispose of it, and she'll take it and she'll dispose of it or whatever. Don't just casually throw it away. But it's not an event like her normal events where she trains a bunch of volunteers what to look for, and then they all go do it together. Right, right. Okay. Right. Great. Bob. Uh, okay, Tom, uh, anything else? Uh, I have nothing at this point. There you go. I see Alan is joining us. Nope. That's gonna We've be got, uh, we have the final. We have Arlene, but it's really going to be Tom Donovan. Uh, okay, Arlene. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> hey, Roy. Hi, Roy. And Alan. Hello. Hello. We got Tom. Are you expecting anybody else, Alan? Well, Roy and Rihanna should be coming. Roy's here. Roy's here. So we have a quorum. We're just waiting for Rihanna. Uh, I haven't heard from her, but I'm hoping she, she's, I haven't heard otherwise. So yes, we, she should be joining, but we have a quorum. We can get going. Good. All right. Um, all right, we'll go back up to, uh, well, I guess we're not going to be able to discuss those. All right, Tom, we're going up to old business. Consider operating budget cuts. What do we have on that? You, you want to do that and, and, and not start the joint meeting? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we'll start the joint meeting. Right on time. Yeah, well, um, I don't have I don't have much to uh, to add except what I've already sent out. Oh, I, I do have one thing on the uh, document I set off. I sent out called five and ten percent cuts that had uh, all the different departments. Uh, well, almost all a lot of the departmental uh, responses, all the ones I got except one, which was the police. And uh, I sent that out uh, this afternoon. Uh, Ken said that with a 5% cut, he would uh, cut his fuel budget because he expected um, uh, costs might go down for fuel next year because of the price of gas. Uh, for a 10% cut, he said he'd be looking at uh, fewer patrol hours or uh, staff positions. And really, it's not so much positions, it's, uh, it's the, um, the hours that that people would get. So the hours people would be on could be reduced with a 10% cut. That's the only addition I have to the, um, to the um, uh, budget cut thing. I, 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 did want to, uh, I, I did want to make sure that Alan had the opportunity to, um, if you needed to do any finance committee business uh, while you have a quorum, um, I know you've got some reserve fund transfer items and um, to work on, and I, I didn't know whether you'd had a chance to do those yet. Yeah, Alan, Alan is uh, off the screen. Uh, Roy, Roy did the finance, did no, the finance we, committee? Uh, no, we have, we, by design, we were waiting till this meeting was, or not, I, you know, I don't, I think maybe we forgot about the transfer stuff but we we put off we were going to meet between the last meeting and this meeting but we put it off till after this so uh there are three items and and if the finance committee could be allowed to do that i'd appreciate it because uh we need to pay some bills yeah well, we could, that's fine you know we could do it um well no we can't do it at the end because it has to be this meeting right because this is the meeting that was posted so, yeah, well, uh, Alan. Here's Alan. 
Yeah, so, one of we, we, apparently there's some uh, transfer requests that we need to, to uh, yeah, approve. Two. I want to propose a meeting for this Thursday at 6 p.m. Tom, Donovan, could you make that meeting for Thursday, 6 p.m.? You can call in or Zoom in with your neighbor if you want. Well, how about I just go, I'll stand in your front yard. Sounds good. All right. That's all right, you guys. I just I can't do that on now. The articles, the uh, school committee and then the request for transfer from the reserve fund for the uh, health insurance. Right, right. Those are the two items, right, uh, Tom Hudson, correct? Uh, there, there should be three. Uh, I have eleven hundred dollars. There was eleven hundred for the uh, finance fee from the treasurer. Twenty-four, and then sixty-five, whatever it is, for the uh, kitchen equipment at the Conway Grammar School. All right, yep. This Thursday, if actually, it's possible, Tom Hudson, if you can set up that, could you set up that Zoom meeting of the town Zoom account? I mean, I have a go-to meeting account myself, but I'd rather use the town. You know, this is it's more transparent. Uh, sure. Um, I will, uh, I suppose I'd have to post the meeting as well. Yeah, I guess. Right? Uh, well, uh, no, we, we can't do it for Thursday. It's Tuesday already. Oh, you want to do it for Friday? Alan, you can't do it now. It's already, it's posted in, in these. Oh, it is. Agenda right you now. Yeah, yeah, you want to do it now? I mean, yeah, I don't want yeah. To... why don't you do it now? Okay, let's do it now. So here it is. The um, it was one motion to the finance for the town of Conway. Amount requested $1,100 to be transferred from the reserve fund as a fiscal <laughs> advisory fee for the borrowing of the highway garage. And um, so that's the motion. We transfer the money from the reserve fund. I guess the, the highway reserve fund, uh, town garage reserve fund, Tom. Is that right? Does it count from the town reserve fund? Town reserve, okay, yeah. So I, I make a motion that we do so. Any, any uh, all those in favor? Yeah. How about you, Roy? Yeah. Okay, I, anybody, all in favor? Anybody, nobody seconded the motion. I heard you second it, Roy. You second. Go ahead. All right. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right, next one. This concerns the uh, health insurance. We have four additional people on health insurance from the Conway Grammar School than anticipated. So it's to request the, from the town reserve fund $28,400 for the uh, payment of additional health insurance. There's a shortage of that much, $28,400. How, how, how much is in the fund? <clears throat> uh, 37544 Yeah. And and what was the amount we just did prior? When we're all done, we're going to take. No, when we're all done, done, we're going to take thirty six out of it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thirty six. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I make a motion that we approve the request. Any uh, anyone second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Next up is the. Uh, Transfer of 6,500, looking for the, uh, it's in my paperwork here. I've got so much paperwork over the last two weeks. Somewhere, $6,555, right, Tom? How does it? 33. 65, what is it, Tom? 6,533. 6,533 from the reserve fund for the Conway Grammar School for the payment of the uh, steamer in the kitchen. And uh, so Second. I made the motion to approve it. The original amount requested was 9000 It came in under budget. Nice. FYI, I make a motion to approve the transfer. Anyone second? second? Yeah. Tom seconds. How about you? Uh, for all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Three in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. So that's it. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Select Board. Okay. <laughs> Do you need a, a signature from me on anything, uh, Tom Hutchison? I can yes, I need a signature for you on all of those. You have okay. one at home, I believe, and there are two more in the Finance Committee mailbox here. Okay, so I'll sign those and leave them in, the, in your mailbox uh, tomorrow. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
All right. All right. We all we all set to go on to our uh, joint meeting here. Well, just just we sort of left off in the middle of a topic, which was operating budget cuts and. Well, yeah, yeah. But that's part of it. Roll that over into this meeting. That's fine. That's what we're going to do. All right. All right, Thomas. Uh, you said the only thing that you added to budget cuts was the uh, the police department minus one thousand. Uh, that was the uh, five percent. Um, and he said he'd take that from fuel. Uh, Ten percent would be double that that he would take from uh, from uh, patrol time as staff costs. Yeah, I don't think you um, want to take any patrol time. I agree. So you all got the um, the five and ten percent cut sheets, and each department has presented what they think they can do. I would draw your attention to the treasurer collector item. Um, where she does not feel as though she has really any slack, uh, as she mentioned last week. Uh, so um, I would not be comfortable with an across-the-board 5% cut anyway. Um, uh, the total we would save, as on the Excel sheet, is about $35,000. Um, I have one thought on, uh, on revenue as well. I know the sentiment last week was was doom and gloom, um, but uh, because uh, people who have been laid off uh, because of this are eligible for unemployment now, and a lot of them are getting not only uh, unemployment, but um, if they're not making a lot, they also get an extra $600 a week on top of that. Um, my sense is that we're actually less at a risk for people not being able to pay real estate bills uh, than they were during the last pretty much real estate-based recession. Um, this is not a, a mortgage real estate recession. People who are, who are out of work are getting unemployment plus a subsidy. Everybody's also getting this $1,200 thing. So um, I'm beginning to think that, um, uh, you know, even my conservative estimate last time, which was two years of Great Recession plugged into one, is too conservative. And rather than, um, uh, you know, since last, and I, and I did this all, you know, I sent out the other piece, too, that said, well, you know, we could... You know, we, we, we can still make a $400,000 revenue deficit, deficit out of our existing funds. Um, but I'm now thinking that, that uh, 300000 is is um, as, you know, the most conservative w w we need to think of. You know, if, if it were one year, because that's two years of Great Recession. If it were one year, it would be half that. Half that cost is real estate taxes. So... Uh, in, in, it would be reasonable to suggest that a quarter of that figure um, was uh, something that we could expect in terms of revenue loss next year. So I, I'm, after thinking about it um, uh, with a bit more perspective, um, I'm pretty well convinced that uh, we're in better shape than I had thought earlier. You know, I, I put that number out as a what I thought would be an absolute limit, and I was uh, somewhat surprised that people had some opinions. I and I, I don't know what figures those were based on for last week's discussion, um, but I'm putting that out there now on the revenue side. Also, is saying, yeah, even if we cut five percent, which which would stress some departments, um, we, we're only saving thirty-five thousand dollars. And, you know, ho holding, you know, with, with wages frozen, um, 133 of the 148 or $49,000 uh, that, that we were originally slated to add to last year's budget are items that we have no control over. They're the employee benefits and the borrowing for the highway garage. That means there's only $15,000 in the town side rise um, with, with wages frozen. So 
Um, maybe we can uh, have a, a conversation that takes those, uh, those numbers into account. So, Don, I, I, I just, just leave it all to everyone else. Just, um, I think the 300,000 is plenty as a revenue shortfall for us to cover with uh, free cash and uh, general stabilization. No we can but, but only if necessary. Point. What's that? Oh, only if necessary. Again, yeah, this exactly. Is, exactly. It, yeah, that would be that was that's an upper limit. Only if necessary. And so, and what I would suggest is that there be a something written into the article which said that the the finance committee and select board would both sign off on um, any spending from those funds that was due to a revenue deficit. We'll know what that, we'll have an idea of what that might be when the November tax bills come in. We won't know for sure until the end of the year, uh, but I, I, think, I think we would be safe doing uh, it that we can, way. We can always do a, a special town meeting in November after the, um, the taxes come in We'll know better than what's happening. I, I think the three hundred thousand as an upper limit. Um, so we we looked at this last week. More than enough. We looked at this last week, and just keep an open mind here, John, because the the, the it, it wasn't just based on opinions, Tom. You were on this discussion. It was based on the 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 realization that your estimate of loss of Chapter seventy aid um, as a placeholder for just loss of school aid in general was 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 low. And we're going to lose more than that. And and it's not just it's not necessarily so much this, the 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 chapter seventy loss itself. It's it, it it's the almost the guarantee of the loss of the tr the transportation money, and and um um and when 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 you added the the uh, what what we expect on the school side. That's how we got it up. To, that's how it, it came out at four hundred thousand, and th and that is a conservative estimate. Um, and so that's that that's what that was based on. And, you know, it's it's it wasn't just opinion. It wasn't just a feeling. Um, it was just that's what the numbers are. And if um, yeah, but but this was a conservative estimate for revenue loss, meaning we're on the high side. And that's it, as far as it goes, but he didn't take into account all the things that he didn't know about or that he didn't, he didn't take into account what he didn't take into account. Um, and that includes the transportation stuff. Um, yeah, so that's how we got up there. And, and that's, we're at 74% funding this year. And there's a guarantee, almost a guarantee that it's going to go to 50 and maybe 25. And that's a six figure number for us. I think that um, uh, well, at, at that rate, we'd probably have to borrow anyway. Here, here's here's the thing. Look, it's easy. I was kept they kept reminding today. The extended benefit unemployment benefits are going to be up in July. Doesn't seem like there's going to be a great uh, uh, push uh, or a great chance that there that those are going to be extended. The regular unemployment benefits will be there. Um, it's, I, I look, I'm not, we're supposed to be conservative here. Okay, so, I, I mean, what are we talking about here? We're talking about w whether we're gonna have a shortfall of 300, 400, 500,000. Some, I think we could agree it's gonna be, at, it probably at minimum 300,000, and maybe at max. I, I don't think so. No, no, I think that'd I, be maximum. No, it, it that is not, I don't think it's a minimum. Um, and, you know, we, we did lose money on Chapter 70 in the Great Recession. I, I know some of it was backstopped with, with era money. Um, uh, but, it, you know, it, if, it's, if it's something that's, you know, six figures, that's not something we can cut from the budget. So that, you know, again, we have to look to our other funds Correct. and we have to, we have to think about the possibility of, of borrowing at that point. Yeah, I, I have no problem with either, but let's not deceive ourselves as to the, the 
the shortfall that is almost this is not business as usual. It's hard to see that. And I think they would like you to believe that it is because that's part of the idea. If people believe, well, then they're going to go out and start spending and doing whatever they did beforehand. But people are smarter than that. And I don't think that that's necessarily the case. So, all, so there'll probably be less new cars sold. There's going to be less, um, uh, just less of everything, less meals tax because people are not going to be going out to eat as much. And I, I, so I just think that it's prudent to, and again, like I said, I don't care if it comes from stabilization slash free cash or we borrow. I really don't, myself, I don't care. That's, that's my opinion. All right, why don't, why don't we do this? 300,000, um, we'll say that could come from free cash and uh, general stabilization. And then we'll put in an, an article saying, if we have to borrow another two hundred thousand, that'll come out in short-term borrowing. Is that is that good? It's okay with me. Bye, everybody. I have a question. So, if, if, so suppose we have to borrow more than two hundred thousand. Then what? That's oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Five hundred thousand was the max you guys were talking about last week. I just covered the max for you in 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 free cash, the general stabilization, and borrowing. Okay. So now you're telling me, well, what if it's more than five hundred? Yeah, what just putting out the million. Bonus. What if it's two million? We'll have to, if it's more than five hundred. We're going to have to deal with it. We'll have a yeah, special. So we don't know that now. We have. We'll, we'll ask procedure. We'll that's know that six months from now. Well, how about, we'll how, about that's all. how about we mm -hmm. um, we do the we average the budget. We level fund. We go to twelve months. Boom, boom, boom. One twelfth, one twelfth. However, all that works. That was discussed last week. You know, this is like a. We're playing a card game. It is a poker game. All the little towns got their cards. We're not sure if we're going to get any more. We're not sure if the dealer's going to tell us to give them back cards. It's like, but yeah, we're what, we're, what we're right talking now, about John, here is revenue John, shortfalls. John, right now, our hand isn't being called. I don't know why we laid down our hand anyways. You know, it's just like, let's just say level fund, 12 months, and we don't even have to have a town meeting. There, um, I, I have a couple of comments about that. First yeah. of all, we yeah. have to spend more than we did in FY70 unless we cut $130,000 out of the budget because we have $130,000 in extra expenses that we have to pay in employee benefits and borrowing costs. What, Aside from that, the budget's only going up $15,000. And the other thing is, um, I forgot what the other thing was, but that's the major point, is that a one twelfth budget will not, uh, based on FY20, will not um, be sufficient to, oh, the other point is, we can, we, we will probably have to have a special town meeting in late November or December to do some adjustments. If we need, well, if we need adjustments, we can have a special town meeting then to do them. But in order to set the general budget, we need to do that so that um, we incorporate that extra $130,000 that we are committed to spend, you know, because I, I well, we even did. the 5% cut that saves 35 is going to throw some departments into turmoil. So we coming up with a way to address that, I, I think we've done that. And I'd like to have a town meeting as soon as we find out the, 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 the state numbers, because if it's as good as you think it is, I'd like to restore the wage freeze numbers and restore people's pay raises. Well, fine. We can do that if that's the case. There's nothing that says we can't have a town meeting in September. Right, right. About what, what the budget's going to be. Exactly. So why don't we just wait? Just figure we do the 12. Because, Tom, I mean, if it comes, push comes to shove, I mean, it's pretty quick. We can do something. Tom, if we, do, if we don't pass a budget and make up the 130000 we won't have it. We won't have enough money. We have That's to right. pass a budget and make up that 130000 That's right. Yes, but for the till it's due, like Jan Warner said last week, she could probably go making payments until March. She said, when it got to March, it looks a little scary. She put it up on the screen last week. So, you know, it's kind of like, at least, it, like I say, the, the God game isn't over yet. The, our hand isn't being called. I don't know why we have to do this. What, what's the big deal? I'm having this town meeting. It's, 
It's we can put it in automatic. And if it's a problem, we've had enough special town meetings the last eight years. Holy cow, it's pretty quick. We can do something. Whether it's September, October, January, or March, like Jan Warner was talking. Well, one of the things that, that would happen is um, when if we don't set a tax rate, then everybody in November gets estimated taxes based on FY20, based on the FY20 budget. So we know the budget's going to go up at least $133,000 from FY20 anyway. And, you know, if, we, if you pass the budget in front of you, it'll only be $15,000 more than that. Um, Tom, when they do the and, do you have any idea what, what might happen to uh, town valuations moving forward on the, on the real um, estate? B b before I get to that, let me, let me finish my thought, which is that then what you get is an adjusted tax payment in, uh, you know, you're in early April, you get a bill for May that not only makes up for the difference between the first tax bill and the budget, but it also includes the difference between what that would be and this and the second bill. So you get kind of a double whammy. And uh, I understand that was done not long before I got here. And I also understand it was not popular. So just that that that's one of the that that's one of the effects. And and I'm sorry, what, what was your uh, what was your other question? Tom? I'm, now, right now, I couldn't tell you. I don't know that I have any questions. No, you, you, the one you just asked. Well, it was about, you know, or, or, as you're looking into the crystal ball, what happens to property oh, yeah. valuations? Um, that, that's something that takes years to play out because no, valuations no, are that. based on, on, on comparable sales. So until there are a number of sales, prices will either go up or down. Typically the valley, uh, the real estate prices are relatively secure. They don't go up and down as much as, as, as other places. Um, and I don't know what the valuations did back in, uh, during the great recession. Um, but if there were adjustments, it, it, would, it would really take probably five years for the full effect to be seen. Okay. One of the things that you're seeing is that there's no is that the residential uh, real estate has really gone in the hopper just because so many people are unemployed and you can't get a mortgage when you're unemployed. Um, you can't get a mortgage if you own a lot on a, to work on a college loan as well. Yeah, even if you have a return to work date and you're just temporarily COVID-19 laid off. Um, you, you can't but that doesn't, right. that doesn't affect the valuation. It's yeah. a moot question anyway, because if everybody's valuations went down 15%, you still have to fund the budget. So you're, you know, it's, so you, it, it's yeah. semantics, really. Well, no, then Rory, we'd be discussing, okay, what kind of budget are we going to fund? <laughs> There's yeah. always an angle to where you're coming. Then I'll, then I'll re-bump to our levy limit. I don't want to even go there in that one. Okay. Well, that's... Okay. I have a procedural question for you, Tom Hodges, and that is if we uh, do we'll go ahead and approve a transfer of $159,000 from the free cash to the general stabilization fund, that required that, that begs then for a uh, special town meeting if we have to approve, uh, approve the transfer of the town meeting by two-thirds vote, I think it is, right, for the, for the transfer of $159,000 to our budget if, if it's needed, right? Well, that would be the point of the vote at this town meeting to That's authorize town. that expense. So you can just um, do it without having and, a second and, vote? All right. And, and again, what I'm suggesting is that that, that be put into uh, the hands of the, the Finance Committee and Select Board jointly, so that if we had to spend it, it would take a, a joint um, approval of the Finance Committee and Select Board. And, and it would be only be for purposes for um, you know, if, if revenue came in below what it needed yeah. to. Operating shortfall, right? Operating budget shortfalls, correct, yes. Right. Yeah, okay, so, so getting a pre-approval saves in a panic having to come up with a meeting and yeah. basically tell people, if you don't approve this, um, the lights are going to go off at the uh, grammar school next week or something. Mm -hmm. 
Tom, would it be possible to just put the words free cash, funded by free cash, along with however else we fund Article 2? That would be the purpose of the special article authorizing free cash to be spent on the operating budget. Article 2 is a raise and appropriate article. Only. So that, Only. That, that's taxes. And what I've tried to do... Uh, and and was was successful at at least yet le last year, if not the year before. And, and what I try to do this year is make sure that all the other money articles are not funded through taxation, but through the money that we put into capital stabilization, especially and free cash. Yeah. Um, there's also others: assessors overlay, ambulance receipts reserved. Um, we have used some from from general stabilization a little bit as well. We couldn't put into Article Two that it's raised and appropriate and free cash is necessary or something, something like that. No, you no, we would have to have it. No, the article. No, it, it would be an exact figure. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. We 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 need an exact figure. Well, no, but the exact figure are the amounts of the budget. They we never have an exact figure of where it's going to come from. Oh, yeah. Don't we? Well, I I I would want. I would want people to know potentially how much free cash they were authorizing. I think it's important to, I, I would want a figure attached to free cash. Okay. I mean, it's not infinite for one thing. It, it's, it's still quite limited. So if we, if we assume a uh, budget deficit of um, 318,000 approximately, we approve the transfer of $159,000 from free cash to general stabilization fund to be redistributed back if need be to meet operating budget deficits. And um, then we have uh, $61,000 of free cash. Is that, I'm trying to read your, your scenario overview from uh, for the meeting, Tom Hutchinson. Similarly, free cash that cuts, so we have $497,000 of free cash, 220,318 slated for expenditures, before considering 159,000 that we just mentioned here about transferring to the general stabilization fund. That means we go into fiscal year 21 really with $61,000 of free cash. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's uh, it's less than we did last year. It's more than we've had other years. If we have a revenue deficit of $400,000 then we'd have to authorize additional 41,000 from each fund. In other words, we'd have to take uh, what? 41,000 from free cash and put it to general stabilization fund. Is that what you meant by that, Tom? No, you meant take it out of free cash and 41 out of st general stabilization. Uh-huh. Take it out of both to get the extra 80,000 if it had to be nearer 400,000 deficit rather than the 318. So that would leave us with negative free cash. Is that right? No, no, we, we no, it'd be a little. No, you, you've got you've got sixty sixty one in there now. Um, so uh, the the other possibility is to authorize borrowing, short term borrowing, to cover it, just to ensure that we have money in free cash and general stabilization. Um, I, again, that could wait for a special town meeting once we've seen what kind of revenue we're, is coming in during the first half of the year. One, one, we don't have to solve the whole problem now. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant about 12, I'm 12, think 12. Of a, a, guide, a guideline for us to go by here, and that is, I still think it's good, good measure for us to have the ability to keep 300,000 in free cash, even if it means we have to borrow money in a pinch through the state house note sale program. I just think running our free cash down to uh, Basically, nothing in this with this uncertainty is. I don't think well, it's a good idea. That, well, that's that's fiscal year twenty free cash I'm talking about there. Yeah. I'm not talking about fiscal year twenty one free cash. We hope we have some. I mean, at this point, uh, that means we go in with with very little, and we might have to, we might go into a deficit. According to, I'm just trying to understand what you've written here in your scenario. No, no. Next year's free cash will be based on this year's. Budget overages, any land that Jan sells, any money, extra money that comes in from the state, all those things that go into free cash, that's next year's free cash. So, you know, based on current trends, I would expect us to get 
$200,000 anyway in free cash for next year, maybe 250, maybe 300, I don't know. Depends on how much land Jan sells. That's another factor here. So uh, I'm just trying to think of all the uh, things. I'm just thinking of myself as a member of the town and town meeting. I'm trying to understand this overview. I mean, one thought would be uh, to make it, I think, more clear as a suggestion, Tom, Tom Hutchinson, is if you could make a table and if you could put different scenarios on the table, one would be a revenue deficit shortfall of 318000 and then assuming we level fund, a revenue deficit shortfall of 318, we level fund, and we have uh, windfalls, if you will, quote unquote, from asset sales, like some kind of a minimum figure we would anticipate. And then uh, the worst doomsday scenario, which would be a 5% operating budget cut and a 10% operating budget cut to address if the operating short, if the rep tax revenue shortfall should uh, come in that, you know, you say in this overview here, $400,000 or potentially more. I mean, we don't know. Hopefully it won't. What, what do you think? I just think it would make it a lot easier to explain. I can see this town meeting going on and on, people just not understanding this, the verbiage. It makes it more clear if it's in a, in a table, tabular format. I, I, I could prepare that for town meeting. I have it all for you in text, in documents that I've sent out, like the one, the one you're reading from. Yeah, it's, 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 I find it confusing to follow, that's all. You know, guys, guys, if, if, if we take 150, we authorize 150 from free cash, authorize 150 from general stabilization, and authorize borrowing, short-term borrowing up to 200,000, we're covered up to $500,000. Makes it simple. And that's only if we need it. So we're not taking any of this money unless we need it, but we're ask, asking for the authorization. That's all we're doing with this article is asking for the authorization for those items. We don't need to have a town meeting approval, understood, uh, John, John, but uh, we don't need to have a town uh, meeting to approve any bar, and we don't have to, we, right? We can, we can just approve it with the recommend to the town treasurer and the, and the finance committee, right? Well, I, I w wouldn't want to do that without, without town meeting. I mean, so that people, that, that's things. transparency. Right? We want transparency. Understood, but I mean, I want to leave ourselves the option. I want to get hamstrung into a special town meeting if we have to uh, borrow money in a pinch. If, I don't know, November comes and the economy goes into a negative tailspin again, and you know, there's no there's no stimulus as, as we now have. You know? I'm definitely with John um, on this one. I'm definitely with John on this one. Town meeting for borrowing. Good yeah, understood. But I mean, good idea. With a number that's certain, and, and we don't know with certainty what our revenue deficit shortfalls are going to be. Yeah, but we're covering five hundred thousand out of what what I just said. Mm -hmm. That's the max that, that you guys talked about last week. We're authorizing to that max. We're covering our our shortfalls with authorizations. If we need it, we may not need. We may yeah. we might be at two hundred thousand. Who knows? Yeah. But we're still doing the wage freeze and the level funding. Doing the wage freeze. Yeah, the other cuts, non -op, non non salary cuts, are uh, de minimis anyway. Likewise, the, the grammar school is basically level funding for fiscal year twenty one with fiscal year twenty. Right, right, Phil. Correct. Dollar, to the dollar, right. Correct. As requested, I might add. Yeah. <laughs> So are we close? <laughs> the other black, the other black swan event that's out there too is that you know they they are redoing the the minimum contribution calculation for the school, uh, for the school for Frontier, as part of all this. That's the rinsing it through the EQV formula, and those those. Um, we'll see which town has suffered the worst. Well, and, we're a Title One town, so we it's can. not us. Well, we're, 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 Deerfield. We're, Deerfield will suffer the worst. It, it, should, it will be Sunderland. It was us the was it last Even year. Even Waitley has more than, than our contribution this year, don't they? Or or do they have less? Right. Well, I mean, I I, I think I, I thought I heard Tom talking about how that are from the revenue side that that we have less this year. Um, so that's a good thing because that's what they go after. And um, but that's 
that's that's the potential to really blow the thing up too because we don't know that's a mystery of mysteries what i'm hearing is that we're going to pass we're going to we're going to pass a budget tom's original budget uh, uh well with the wage adjusted freeze. with with wage freezes yes yep yep and and we're going to add a warrant article to raise five hundred thousand dollars as john proposed well that that'll have we that'll have it. to be three 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 warrant articles okay because free cash is a majority vote General stabilization is a two-thirds vote, and borrowing is a two-thirds vote. Warren articles are cheap. Great. And we're also going to do some of those cuts that were, you know, the the, the police chief offering up the thousand dollars and fuel whatever. That seems like a a donation to the cause that he was very well. Happy. That that was part of the document that says five percent and ten percent cuts. This is what it would do to our department. So there were volunteer um, cuts. John said John was going to cut his 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 massive pay, and I'm certainly willing to throw in my select board massive pay, and I can thank Donald Trump for making up for that. And Donald's paying you off. He is. Didn't he yeah. pay you a vote from next time? <laughs> the uh, thought here is if we're going to a two thirds vote to borrow more money to the state house note sale, suppose we don't get the two thirds vote, then what? Well, well that's a matter for a special well, town meeting in the fall if we board. need it. Yeah, we, we can do it as, as at, a, at a special town meeting well, if, if, if we have to. Vote to if we don't get two thirds vote to borrow, if we have to make up for a uh, the revenue deficit comes at more than three hundred thousand dollars. You mean in the fall at the special town meeting? Yeah, we, we, we're already forcing ourselves to a special town meeting if you want to pass a budget. It, then I lay off staff and restructure town government. And everybody gets less services. So my thought is, if we do this now, we're kind of kicking the can down the road. I mean, my thought is, uh, you're saying we're going to have a $300,000 shortfall. Uh, who knows? I mean, it could be worse in the No, I'm I, I, I'm saying that that to me now is a maximum revenue deficit uh shortfall alan i think we're doing the opposite it, it, we're, we're passing a budget that's going to be what we need and we may or may not have a shortfall in revenue but we may not and if we don't we, cover, we don't have to do we anything can cover three hundred thousand of that with funds we already have right we cover anything over that with with short-term borrowing right but but if we do the 112 thing and don't pass the hundred and thirty thousand that we know we have to come up with we that we're guaranteeing we're going to have to have a special town meeting and beg the town to borrow or something we we, we can't you know the, the 112 thing isn't going to cover the hundred and thirty thousand that's that's in the budget already that we have no control over right the 112 thing is also pretty unwieldy to work with, isn't it? Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like you have bills that have to be paid all at once. That well, they said, the that, they said that last week that it's not happening. No, when you, got your bulk, when you got your bulk disbursements, it all works out. Yeah. But, but as I was getting at was, either way, you're going to have a meeting. So if you do the 112, this meeting you have will be further down the road. And when you got to right. cover one, well, you got to cover the hundred and thirty thousand. Then we cover it. Uh, I, was, right? yeah, I, don't think, meeting. I don't think it's a good idea to go into the the next fiscal year without having some sort of a budget in place. Even yeah. though it's it's a it's just a wild guess mostly. Well, hey, you know what? I think the townspeople would 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 really be upset if we right, didn't right. go into. I don't think most of the townspeople town would know about it. So I, I was in favor of the one twelfth idea as long as the other three towns in Frontier all did it as well. Um, I'm not going to do it. No, they, they're they're not. They're they're not. And so at, it doesn't make and ju just um, the 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 cries of anguish that would arise from the administrative staff of both town and school to have to deal with one town doing a one twelfth budget and three towns doing a plan budget oh. is a. Uh, 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 Oh. A nightmare scenario. It's at this point, like either we had to all do it together or we 
All right, Phil. But it did seem like last week, the way Jan was talking, there's certain, there's just certain times there's disbursements, large disbursements. So we got to pay this, we got to pay that. Yes. Yeah. So if that's the case, I mean, we'd still be doing it just like we did last year with the school, with Frontier, whatever it was, that's what we'd be doing. I tend to, I agree with John O'Rourke. I think it behooves us to have a budget, even though it's, it's in, look, we recognize it's an educated guess. So we have a guess, we have a contingency. The contingency is not for an off the cliff event or series of events. It's for a reasonable realm of things. Um, I have no problem with that. Me either. And uh, that would be capping the borrowing at $200,000, Roy, is that what you're thinking? Yes. Well, what you have to go to the state house apply, most of the program. I, I'm not. I don't. Whatever you want to cap it at, cap it at five hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, no, we can't. We can't do that, guys. We, we got to. We got to well, have reasonable here. Well, what's? We're not saying we're going out to borrow it. Yeah, we're saying that right. it, only if we need it. Short-term borrowing. All the borrowing we need. We'd rather not limit ourselves to a number of two hundred thousand. Why not make it? Uh, why not make it the, uh, the level of free cash for ideally you have, you know? Maybe make it 400,000. So we're gonna have 61,000 free cash going there. We can pop the 400,000 to keep our free cash level at somewhere between 3% and 5%. I mean, I, I, think, I think there is, I think it behooves us to I mean, what, this meeting multiplied by 46 other little town meetings or more, it's going to percolate up to the state level at some point. And it really, it behooves, I mean, the state, the state said, okay, do the 12, you know, the, the, the last year's budget divide by 12. Well, how many towns are going to be able to do that? The answer is probably very few for the same reasons that we have here. So, I I, I don't <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what the objection is to approving I, I see two things. Some of you want to cut the budget that we're working off. Okay. You want to make cuts into that budget. Okay. And then the other areas that I see issues are do we do we want to get the approval to borrow and for how much? So let's come to some consensus on it. So to, to me, those are two interrelated issues. I, I don't really want to borrow until we're really tightened our belt and do the full cut with a $35,000, even though it's only $35,000 savings, that that's like just as symbolic as anything else that you have to do before, before you say we're going to what, borrow in your- what is 30, I'm sorry, what is $35,000? The, the, the total right amount over. that you'd save by going to the 5% or the, the 10% or whatever. So you spread Five, that over seven hundred. What? Spread that over seven hundred taxpaying entities in the town. What are you talking about? I don't understand. You're going to save seven thirty-five thousand dollars over seven hundred households, taxpaying entities. What are we talking seven about bucks? here? Fifty bucks. Bucks. Yeah. Fifty bucks. I mean, Phil. What, what, what's the principle here? Why do we have to stand on a principle over this? Yeah, actually, that's a good point, Roy. <laughs> Let me think about that. We're, we're already um, suggesting a wage freeze. And that's, that's a fairly serious step to take. Um, it, it, is, it is, you know, making that statement on on the backs of the town employees. Uh, uh, I, I played a double role here. In, in one sense, I'm kind of chief of staff. And I have to stand up and say, you know, employees are really one of the, one of the last places you'd want to cut. We could make up 15,000 with some of those, uh, those voluntary cuts that were, that were offered earlier and not have to do the wage freeze and still end up with the budget we have now. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure it's a great idea to actually freeze the wages. It's three. It's three thousand dollars per half a percent. 
So you get about $15,000 for 2.5%. It's actually 16000 It's a little bit more than that. But that's, that's a rough figure. So I'll just throw that out there. I, I, I understand, you know, it's dire straits, but right now that the discretionary part of the town budget is only going up $15,000. That's huge. You know, an, another another 15 or 16 is substantial. It, it doubles that. Um, but maybe a little bit less would would not leave town employees feeling quite as as uh, disrespected as they might. So Tom, we can uh, have Tom, a special we town can't, meeting. We can Tom, we got to go with a with a freeze right now. Yeah. And we can't even even if it's a minimal increase, we can't do that. Yeah. In 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 the in the situation we're in, it just will look bad. Could we add it in later? Uh, it, that would, that would add it in take later. a town meeting authorization. Yeah, that would take yeah, a town right. meeting authorization. Yeah. So, so do that. you know, if, if if we don't have trouble, we can make a, a retroactive, um, right. you know, like pay yeah. what, what in, in the spring, do, in the fall, or the right spring, now, or whatever. What we have to do right now is put together a budget that that covers our essential services that doesn't increase anything that doesn't need to be increased. We put in that, that authorized that 150 from free cash, the 150 from general stabilization, the 200,000 uh, borrowing, short-term borrowing if we have to. That covers the uncertainty we're looking at. We've got services covered and we've got uncertainty covered. Okay, that's where we should be right now. Yeah. John, are you making a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. The motion favor what's the motion <laughs> you can't just say are you making a motion and then just in the middle of a sentence say what's the vote what the hell yeah is the and who who vote who votes do the committees vote separately or what what are we voting on well, well that's the proposal that i just made we'll go with tom's we'll go with tom's budget with the voluntary cuts okay no a wage freeze no increase for employees because we can't do that Okay, that covers essential services. We take and we vote an or Warren article 150,000 from free cash to cover operating if we need it, 150 from general stabilization operating, yeah, yeah, yeah. 200,000 borrowing, short term borrowing if we need it. Okay, John, I, I agree with you, John, except for the part that someone else mentioned earlier on the borrowing. If it's only going to be borrowed that we need it, why wouldn't we go with a little bit larger figure just so we didn't have to go back? Because, because go back. now we're telling the townspeople, hey guys, we're talking about $500,000 here in various ways to cover operating shortfalls. We don't want to scare them. Well, the, the, the newspapers can do that. <laughs> Think there, I there's think just more, there's, more, there's one thing I want to clarify. Uh, there's one thing I want to clarify before a vote here, and that is, there were a series of voluntary cuts that were asked for and given. Um, the five and ten percent cut document is not voluntary, so right. we're not talking about that. We're talking about the earlier figures that I gave out for voluntary cuts, some of which. Um, were the, the assessors, for instance, um, included uh, wage and stipend cuts that nobody else made, and I don't think it's it's uh, fair to ask them to do that without asking others to do the same thing. So, um, you know, w with the understanding that um, uh, that's what we're talking about, uh, I'm fine with going ahead with that. No, good, good. There's a motion on the table. Do I have a second? No, because that just changed the motion. Because the, the the assessors thing, the assessors thing w w w was was in relation to a specific uh, employment benefit for the one employee, and she was giving part of that back. There was a stipend increase or a three dollar per hour increase or something, and she gave part of that back as part of the volunteer party. So I don't want to un. And and there was a trainee who was canceled. We're talking about removing her trainee as well. She was putting that off. 
and 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 let's see in a few months whether we can put it back on. We can always do that. But but for now the voluntary cut and 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 I think I remember you saying that at the time that the police department hadn't responded to the voluntary cut thing, and when I saw that the little notice that that Kenny had filled out, I certainly interpreted that a thousand dollar give back was a was a voluntary cut and not really even a response to the five percent thing that that was just strictly this isn't going to affect us at all, and that you should in incorporate that into the voluntary column not really the five percent column all right we, we could i will i will clarify that with Tom and, and the chief all right um and right. and also uh, i understand bob has offered his uh stipend as well Thank bob you, armstrong Tom. yeah <laughs> we have we have a motion we have a second wait wait, wait. So, so which bucket is that motion referring to that is referring to the um, the budget the budget less the voluntary cuts. Right. Having so the borrowing of two hundred thousand is that right? Yep. Yes. Who votes on this motion? Free cash, free cash, Select general board stabilization board. borrowing. Right. Like Tom said, three separate articles. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Who votes, Tom? Well, John's calling for a select board vote. Alan can call for a finance committee vote. So, John, I'll second your art, your motion. Okay. All in favor? Philip? Yeah. Okay. Robert? Yeah. And myself. We're we're unanimous. Finance committee, what do you say? I would like to uh, go along and with uh, increasing the uh, borrowing to uh, up to 500,000 subject to reductions, depending on the asset sales that uh, Jan that's Warner might, that, might achieve. Alan, that's another, okay. one. that's another, uh, that's well, another. I, I, I don't want to, I, I, I'm of the opinion that I don't want to cap the borrowing at any number, 200,000, whatever it is to achieve the operating debt budget text at this point. <laughs> okay, okay, Alan, let, let's let's start with Article 2. Those recommendations for separate articles have to be done separately by next week by both the Finance Committee and Select Board. Those are recommendations on particular articles. So, you know, you can, you can, I, I think that's probably the best way to deal with that particular yeah. one now. Yeah, okay. So this is the budget. This is the budget part. Then we'll, we'll uh, subject to the uh, where well, we're going to level fund basically, and uh, subject to some additional voluntary non-salary cuts. Right. Yes. Yes. Side. No, no, okay. not level fund. We're freezing salaries from last year, and there's some additional cuts. So yeah, it's basically if not level fund to uh, slightly decrease the operating budget. Oh, no, 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 the no, budget has to go fund. up because of the employee health care costs and the, the town garage borrowing. There's another 15,000 in that. Um, that is the 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 rise in the discretionary town budget. That's that's the budget that I presented. So except for the um, the employee health care costs and, and the. Um, the rise in um, in uh, in the borrowing costs for the highway garage, That's you know, e even you know the um, the insurance is another is another uh, rise above that, and the FERCOG is going to go up a little bit. Um, there there are little things in there as well. So there's um, there it's not level funded. It is a fifteen thousand dollar discretionary operating budget increase with the calling it calling the others non-discretionary. So it, it, it's not quite a level fund, but uh, set against that will be the, the cuts, whatever they end up being that were voluntary that I presented before, and I'll check with Ken about the $1,000. So it may come down below that anyway, but, but it's, it's the budget minus the operating M minus the voluntary cuts, we're not sure exactly what that figure is. So I would be careful about using the phrase level funding or anything like that. 
Understood. Thank you. I'm just yeah, yeah. I just don't have a number from, right now. From five for your five eighteen twenty draft, which uh, doesn't include any, but you gave three different scenarios: five ten percent no cuts. In other words, you just outlined right now. Well, on the, on the that would point. now that would now include the voluntary cuts that were offered before, um, yeah. plus Bob Armstrong's and Ken's. Yep. All right. Well, what, how do we refer to this? <laughs> Tom's original yeah. budget minus the voluntary cuts. Okay. Sounds so good. You, okay. Summer oh, fantasy she, budget version one. <laughs> Alan, give us the give the motion there. <laughs> so this is on Article Two on the expense side, and that is uh, yes. I make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, draft from May 18th of 2020 that Tom Hutchinson has prepared, with the additional uh, voluntary cuts. I'm not going to specify a dollar amount because when they what they finally pan out, who knows? I don't want to. Pin, I don't want to pin down to a number. Is that your understanding, Roy and Tom? Yeah. Before I go ahead and seek a floor. Yes. Thank you. All right. Why are we doing that this week instead of next week? Once the numbers are actually set and the ink is dry. Because we need to sign the warrant next week. So Sorry, we're going to have to do all the recommendations. We're going to have to do all the recommendations as well. Yep. So, uh, any any second? Anyone want to second that? Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Yeah. I right, thought so that's right. three. Three against, zero abstentions. I think that was three in favor. Three in favor, three in favor. Three in favor. Yeah. Yeah. no and no one, no one against. Like, we think we only have three people here. Full yeah. consensus. All Alan, right. you said three, three against. It wasn't against. It was in All favor. Right. All in favor. Sorry about that. Good. Thank you. I'm just thinking in the negative, you know. As far as the yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's on the expense side. Now on the revenue side, you want to vote on. Uh, on the revenues. My thought is revenue deficit shortfalls. I'd like to make a motion that we approve and we not cap at 200,000, the, the uh, state house note sale buying. I say we can increase it up to, well, up to 500,000, but minus any uh, windfalls we get from unexpected uh, events such as asset sales. I don't want to tie us into uh, a dollar amount of asset sales since I guess at this point, according to Jan, it's still not negotiated. Tom and Roy, what do you think? Uh, it's Let me ask you that. Well, like I said ahead, before, I agree with what John said. I just think if you know if we raise the number, it, it's we're only going to borrow it if we ended up needing it. So, yeah. so why why I, I don't why like box it. ourselves in if needing yeah. another? I don't want to get boxed into an even number. I don't like those even numbers because, because there's a there's a there's a significant the percentage of people that are just not gonna that, that just don't ever believe someone standing up and saying we're only going to take do it if we need to, and that there's and, mm -hmm. and and that they believe that if they authorize it, they're giving you license to do it, and and so. So I, and I think John was like touching on that a little bit and that the number 200,000 is definitely less scary than the number 500,000. Yeah, and, and we're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to need 500,000 in the next six months. In the next six months. <laughs> we've just limited right, yeah. how much we're going to spend. It, you know, it's not like we can spend crazy. We've, you know, we, we've defined what we're going to spend. We only don't know what is the state not going to give us. And no, what are the residents we already we already have three hundred thousand of that, okay? Yeah, one fifty for free cash, the one fifty from general uh, stabilization, and then if we need to borrow, up to two hundred thousand. That's an awful lot of money. Okay, we have three hundred of it. So here's a question: of it. What happens? Only if, what uh, we need out of that two hundred. So. So this this budget would be presented at the June town, uh, town meeting. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So what happens if they approve the budget uh, and they don't approve? And maybe they'll approve the take from free cash and stabilization. But what if they don't approve the borrowing? Uh, then, if we need it, we come back for a special town meeting. 
Okay. It requires a two-thirds vote. Suppose we don't get two-thirds vote. We may not. That's the same thing. It doesn't pass. Suppose the world ends next week. Okay? We won't have to worry about any of this. Oh, right? don't be so. We could sit here all night and do what ifs. I'd say, uh, well, I like that what if because, I mean, there's a lot of what ifs going on right here, you know? No, but now, yeah. I, I think if, if we end up needing it and we come back for a special town meeting, there's a better chance people will pass it than doing it in June. Okay, so, so in theory, we don't have to have that on there at all. We, we can don't. Just, oh. Yeah. So then why, uh, I don't want to have a town, why have a borrowing? If we have to borrow, we have to call a special town meeting. Right. But if we need to borrow like to, more than the two hundred thousand. Uh, uh, we'll John was trying to have do you that guys just you, changed Alan, your position. You wanted five hundred thousand. First, first, now, you, now you're saying, well, we may not have to do it. So we, why are we doing it in June? You want to do no, no. five hundred thousand? Yeah. What, what, what are we doing here, guys? This is you oh, said, no, I, you said, John. You were listen, so persuasive. We're going around in circles. Two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't because we'll be going back if we need more. And if yeah. we don't need, need more, we won't be frightening yeah, people. Point. We have to go back to a town meeting if we want to, if, if, yeah, if, we'll if, to go back. when we have to borrow. I, I think to a number of people, the concept itself is going to be problematic. And it, but less problematic at two than at five, but still problematic. So why don't we not do the two? We'll just do the free cash and we'll do stabilization and not do an article for borrowing at all. Bob, how many That's people? Enough. How many people do you think will be at town meeting? Three. Uh, I hope a lot. No, six. <laughs> I just wonder. I wonder what will, I'm just curious. What do you think two thirds number is going to be? Will it be ten? Oh, people? our quorum at town meeting is three. Is it a hundred? That's what our quorum is now. Under under the the uh, the special uh, situation here. Is, is what's the quorum? Well, the quorum's usually 25, but now it's 10% of the quorum, so it's three. Wow, so just so a select three people board. town meeting, they can pass yeah. the budget. So the select board can have a town meeting. That's right. <laughs> we could. Oh well, why, are, why are we sitting here? Yeah, that's hey. right. <laughs> good idea. We'll, 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 get we'll let everybody else stay home. We'll get okay. we'll get to do it once, and then the whole next rest of the year we'll get, just get throw things thrown in this by passing automobiles. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got a police force. Okay. <laughs> Look, there it's within the realm of possibility. Some towns, some person's going to get up and say, "Well, what if that's not enough?" And then you will have to say, at that point, we'll have to come back to you for authorization to borrow. Right. I, you know, it's. I, I don't know. I don't, the select board already passed that motion, though. Which one? The motion to, to do 150, 150, 200. That's right. We you did, did pass that? Yeah, yeah we you did. Had, you had three votes? You guys are lagging. Oh. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know? right. wait, wait, wait. You just had three votes? I thought it was one vote. No, no, no we, 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 on the whole, we passed that. Expense side. That was, that was about 20 minutes. We on the whole package. And then Alan comes up with the 500,000. That's right. Well, so big. I right. want to leave the. I'm thinking big. Yeah. Which yeah. is which is when I came in and said we're going to have to vote on all of the articles. You know, the finance committee is going to have to look at all the money articles and make recommendations for them as well before next Monday, so that the select board can sign it and we can get it posted. And I mean, I I I, I could do with you know signing it in the next day or two or something like that, but. Uh, we really need to. Um, we really need to have the warrant next next Monday. I, I, for one, have no, I have no problem voting voting on the same other two articles myself. When's town meeting? Yeah. The twentieth. 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 June twentieth. Oh, so we don't. No, I thought. Okay, so. Okay, so we just have to. We have to approve it or not approve it, basically. Yes. You guys approved the budget. It's, now then, Alan no, brought guys, up what the warrant. No, you. You guys voted them. It's on the. It'll be on the warrant, no matter what we do right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Correct. Yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk you about. You should recommend or not. I, I'm sorry. You can either recommend or not. Yeah. Right. Right. 
I mean, well, I'm ready to do it yeah. tonight. But if you guys are, if the other two members of the finance committee aren't ready, then we don't have to do it tonight. We have to do it all next week. Yeah, we got to get okay. it finished next week's meeting. Okay. If if you guys want to meet before then, and I'm happy to set up a Friday meeting for you guys. Yeah, um, please, do. please do. I think you should. That, Roy, that, that would be a good idea. Roy, can you make it, Roy, in time? We do like a, uh, you want to do like a six o'clock on Friday? You want to do it earlier, five o'clock? What, what do you guys want? Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Um, All right. It's, uh, Friday late afternoon is going to, might be tough for me. How about um, you, Tom Donovan? Can you, uh, does Friday work for you at all? Or we prefer, we can do it Saturday. Saturday morning? What are we talking about? Saturday. Well, a select board for a finance committee meeting amongst ourselves to discuss. To, right, a finance committee. To make right. yeah. 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 Well, yeah, well, re recommendations on the Warren article. Just, just hold it. Let me ask you something. Come by our house and uh, in between your house and mine. Can I, let me ask you guys something. Are we really going to not be in alignment with the select board on this? I think uh, it comes, uh, the biggest well, thing comes down is the yeah. borrowing or not borrowing. We, we have to figure out what we want to do with the borrowing, the language with the borrowing. Alignment is overrated. The borrowing is overrated? No, alignment is overrated. Oh, alignment, I'm sorry. Tom, uh, you're going to say something, Tom Donovan? Well, I was, I was thinking that I, we're probably in alignment with what the select board 20 minutes ago voted on. But as far as the money articles, besides article two, the money articles in the warrant, Tom Hutchinson's talking about. Right. I'm not, I haven't looked at them yet. It's kind of like, oh, well, right, right. We, we, we have, may we not have... be in alignment with the select board. Right. Uh, no, yeah. absolutely. I was talking about the three budgetary article. Yeah, I, I think we're all basically in agreement. It's like cover our ass okay. and let's go. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> okay. And the money articles are all on that Excel sheet. So you've all had them for a long time. The only I one that's been Tom, added. I Tom, I don't get the Excel. I get the Complain to your chair. I get the Greenfield distorter. Complain to your chair. You won't find it there. <laughs> Actually, it won't listen. It's got energy. I don't care. Okay. I gave so you today's... copies of the. Uh, <laughs> I gave you copies last Friday of the. Uh, so, so wait. So today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. The next meeting is next yes. next Monday. Is that right? Yes. Yes. No, next so Saturday we... morning, Roy. The Saturday morning well, works for you, or the, Friday the, night. The finance committee. Why don't we just meet a little earlier next On Monday? Monday. All right, what? that sounds good to me. I prefer that actually. Yeah, How about five o'clock? You want to meet? Want to meet at one o'clock? No, no. We, no well, no, five o'clock. I, mean, I, I don't want to take up the Zoom time. I don't know if it's already reserved. I don't know. No, it's fine. I'm sure. <laughs> we well, we shouldn't get too close. Yeah, you guys so should definitely be over by the time this select board so meeting say, starts. So say, so so hold it. So our agenda will be to vote on. All the money articles, is that correct? Right, right. That's correct. The whole yeah. package. Yes. Including yeah. the right you better, you better, all the money five, articles. Five o'clock sounds sounds right. Five o'clock, have a good time. Five o'clock. I, I don't know that that's going to be early enough. Oh. If you if you have any discussions at all, um, it, it could it could it could go over. Since if you really want to use the select board Zoom thing, you could also use a conference call line, you know. Well, I can set up a Zoom for you, hey, Tom Donovan. Uh, listen, you Zoom or not? I can listen set up. A, I can set up a Zoom meeting. I, I, the mechanics here are not the issue. It's yeah. it's the time. So well, Tom has an issue because Tom Donovan doesn't have a, access to internet at home. But Tom, could you make a right. 5 p.m. meeting on, at this coming Monday? Well, uh, I, I like I say, I, what I probably would do is a, instead of imposing on the folks I am right now. I'd probably just go stand in your front yard, you know, I could just you hear. Can hear that. You can post it then at the 2101. Alan, stand, however your committee wants to do it, however your you committee can stand wants to do it, midway between the two houses. Next Monday That's night, good. you so, guys have a reasonably so, good uh, idea uh, where you uh, want to be. Five, we do five o'clock at, uh, uh, for this coming Monday, with a finance committee to vote on all three uh, proposals as part of the fiscal year 21 budget. 
And the venue is going to be at uh, 2101 Roaring Brook Road. And, and all the money articles, please. All the articles. Yeah. yeah. Well, so listen, the whole for, that matter, for that matter, we can stand eight feet apart and yeah. just do it in person. We don't need the Zoom. You could. That's correct. If I leave so, the room option just in case it's raining, you never know. It could be a thunderstorm. Yeah, because, because next week we definitely have to have the Warren article. Yeah, we got to have it. So I'd we say quit a Warren Zoom in and we'll meet in person. Okay. Right. However you guys want to do it. Sounds good. Smoke signals too, but that, if it's windy, it doesn't work well. Okay. Do we have anything else to discuss? I know I want to spend more time with you guys, but, uh, you know, these meetings. Well, are you are. We're going to have a special town meeting in the fall. So, I mean, we'll see you in the fall, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. All right. So, Alan. If we're still alive, you're not happy. You never know. Uh, Alan, Alan, you got to get the meeting posted. See yeah. You, Tom. No, no Tom, and, uh, Tom, can, can, Tom Hutchinson, can you do that? Or you Tom, he, Tom just left. You just lost, mm -hmm. you just lost Tom. Right. Tom will do it. Well, I, Tom will do it. He's here. Uh, He's here. Hey, here's Tom. Yes, I, I, I will post your, your Monday meeting for you. Thank you. It'll be in person, but we'll also have a Zoom account, too, if you set it up, just in case. You know. okay. Yeah, I, I, will need the, I, I will need the Zoom information in order to post the meeting. Roy, can you do that? Yes. Thank yes. you very much. So, so, so okay. I, okay. you, you know, okay. yeah, tomorrow would be good. What's that? Say it again. Can you get me the Zoom info? By tomorrow, close the business. I'll get it to you tomorrow morning. Good. Wow, that's good. That's service. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Roy. All right. Thank you, Tom Donovan. Okay. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Fun. Gentlemen. Thank you. It's been about as much fun are as we ready. Here. Are we ready to adjourn? Yes. Okay. You don't have any other business, right? No. Well, hold on for a second, though. Phil, because... Phil you have something? Well, you know, if, if the warrant's got to be ready next week, then don't we have to decide where town meeting's going to be tonight? Or can we wait? Does that need next week? That can wait that next week. week. All right. Good night, everybody. See you. Good night, Roy. All right. Good, Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.